Well, hello, fellow pilgrims. I hope that pilgrim greeting intrigues you more than it just sounds weird, but it is the proper word for a course like this, and you'll understand why the further into the semester we travel. I want to take just a few moments of your time before class even begins to talk with you about the course and what it's all about. I think it's important that you know the place I work from, uh, see the world from, and how I think about faith and spiritual formation. After the invitation to teach this class, I begin to think about what a course in spiritual formation might accomplish, or at least what we might pursue in the direction of accomplishment. I've taught spiritual formation classes at the university level, and I've taught coaching and formation in the marketplace, so to speak. But what might happen in this mixed context, undergraduate and graduate students in the same course? There, there are many options, uh, but my internal conversation developed four purposes or guidelines or sides to a box that began to emerge. And I want us to explore these together uh, and practice communal connections to spiritual formation. I want us to explore and practice personal, that is historical and present personal connections to spiritual formation. I want us to explore and practice key theories of development and formation because human development and spiritual formation are very connected. And I want us to explore connections between spiritual formation, spiritual practices, and leadership. Yes, that's a heavy list. It's a long list for, uh, but if we stay focused and connected, I think we can make it. Then I began to think about, well, what understanding about spiritual formation we might consider. Again, there are many options. In general, though, I agree with the statement that Renovari makes when it, they say, formation connects with the ways and means by which we become the persons we are. It is a process and a journey, and I might insert the word pilgrimage in here, through which we open our hearts to a deeper connection with God. We're, we're not bystanders in our spiritual lives. We are active participants with God who is ever inviting us into relationship with him. Renovari, by the way, is a Christian not-for-profit that models resources and advocates fullness of life with God experienced by grace through the spiritual practices of Jesus and of the historical church. Christian in commitment ecumenical in breadth and international in scope, Renovari helps people to become more like Jesus. Those three words, more like Jesus, are central to my understanding of what we're about. <clears throat> I'll say more about that in a bit. You can check Renovari out on the internet. Great, great place to go for all kinds of spiritual formation related matters. Uh, the, so this course can't be a generic course. It can't even be a generic religion course. AU declares itself to be a Christian university. So in the words of Dallas Willard, an, another highly influential contemporary thinker about spiritual formation, this will be a course in spiritual formation in the tradition of Jesus Christ, the process of transformation of the inmost dimension, he writes, of the human being, the heart, which is the same as the spirit or will. It is being formed, really transformed, uh, in such a way that its natural expression comes to be the deeds of Christ done in the power of Christ. 
That statement comes from Dallas Willard. And I just uh, lost my... There I am. I don't know if I lost you or not. I lost me. Um, that statement comes from Dallas Willard, a writer about all things spiritual that I, as I said, highly recommend. Scripture adds to and underscores Willard's uh, dimension, definition, especially Christian scriptures that call us to discipleship, which is a traditional and universal word for spiritual formation, which calls us to follow Jesus to become more like Jesus. In 2 Peter chapter 1, we read, For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, and goodness with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and godliness with mutual affection, and mutual affection with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then, in one of the Pauline epistles, the, uh, the epistle to the Ephesian church, Paul writes, The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer, Paul says, be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes its body's growth in building itself up in love. So, to make it obvious... This is a course in Christian spiritual formation. And you need to know that I take that qualifier seriously for the course and for my own journey, my own life. I am a Christian, by which I mean I take Jesus seriously as the fullest picture of God and the prime authority in my life, which also means that I work hard to follow him, even at times in ways that might appear to be non-traditional. I don't think that means, and I really want to emphasize this qualifier, I don't think that means persons who come from other faith traditions will feel excluded. That's certainly not my intent. I hope it means that we will have open minds, open hearts, as well as an open forum, and that all will be welcome to consider the ways in God uh, leads and calls all People, all people are God's people. I hope if you should feel some degree of exclusion that you will feel free to knock on my door, literally or figuratively, and talk with me or be brave enough to state your questions and concerns in class. In that context, then, as we relate together and grow together, I hope that we will find a good balance between theory and practice with some history and theory thrown in, and that we will engage head, heart, and hands in a personal and mutual journey in, toward understanding, engagement, and growth. Therefore, the class will be a mixture of teaching and discussion about theories of human development and spiritual formation and engaging self-reflection and other spiritual practices that will bring us to a serious consideration of and commitment to living out uh, of our convictions. I'd like to add one further comment I think is important. It is possible that we will encounter perspectives and views that make one or all of us uncomfortable 
because they're unfamiliar or strange sounding or even seemingly contradictory of perspectives and views we already hold with some conviction. What is important to keep in mind is that the focus of this course is that we'll become more like Jesus and that Jesus often invited his followers then and now to uncomfortable places. But we are not abandoned by him and you won't be abandoned by me. Let me tell you just briefly that I've been a teacher for a very long time. I'm an ordained minister in the Church of God and a trained life coach with strong support and spiritual direction. And my door is open to you to talk through those concerns or others that you may have. As it says on page five of the syllabus, I hope we will build a small intentional learning community in our time together. A great deal of conversation is essential for the success of this course. A discussion-oriented class needs full participation, and you will be encouraged to speak out of your life, heart, and mind. But you have permission to speak and not speak, without concern for judgment, impersonal criticism, or uh, confidentiality. Each of you owns your own story. It belongs to no one else. Part of my responsibility is to assure that you experience a safe and comfortable place for talking, listening, and questioning without fear of interruption or condemnation. This course is designed to be both theoretical, practical, personal, and communal. This design then expects Students, I expect students to contribute freely and transparently. However, no pressure to share will be applied. You will share when you're ready, except, of course, for specific assignments for the course. I'm talking about in class, and you will share what you are willing to share. The Vegas rule applies, and any violation of that rule will be treated seriously. <clears throat> I will function in a variety of ways in this class as teacher, facilitator, encourager, cheerleader, and of course at times as evaluator. I have training and experience as a life coach, a relational coach, and a mentor. I will be available to each of you if you should desire a longer or, and or more personal conversation about your own journey. I too am on a journey and at times my role will also be to model and to go first, because I also expect to learn from you. So, welcome, Pilgrim. See you soon.